G'day folks, welcome to this uh, after action report of Holland 44, designed by Mark Simnich and published by GMT Games in 2017. Now this comes straight off the, the, um, the aftermath of my playthrough of Ardennes 44 and has a very, very similar play style and, and feel. But I think the main difference is that Holland 44 feels very much um, more closely tied to the historical narrative you have the main highway that you have to clear, you have the bridges you have to secure and cross, um, whereas Ardennes 44 felt a lot more open in terms of the strategic directions that I could take. One of the things I loved about Holland 44 was the setup sheets that you get with the game. You place all the units on these setup sheets. Uh, once they're all there, you basically move them to board. This ensures that um, yeah, all the units are in place. You also have about 20 of these uh, German unknown defending units, sort of like garrison units that you'll encounter along the way. Um, there is a very full reinforcement schedule, as you can see on the time track. Now, things started off pretty mixed for the Allies on the 17th of, uh, of September. Um, you can see here, these are the, the, the landing locations, as I pan through here. Um, the landings were pretty average. Um, a couple of scattered results, um, which I would say you know, the die rolls basically averaged out. So they weren't particularly bad, they weren't particularly good. You know, you had the, um, a good uh, spread of die rolls. Um, what was problematic, as you can see in this image, is that as these units began to move to the bridges, they encountered a lot of blown bridges. Particularly up in the north, near uh, Nijmegen, um, we had all along the uh, the canal here, blown bridge after blown bridge after blown bridge, and almost immediately, um, <laughs> very you know, very first turn, I'm concerned about Nijmegen. Um, I'm, I'm just I'm not securing any bridges across that. Um, it's called the Mars Val Canal. Um, which links the Waal River to the north, the big river, with the um, slightly smaller Meuse River to, um, to the south. So yeah, blown bridge after blown bridge after blown bridge after the, the airborne move on here. I did have some luck. Uh, you can see this image how I moved out towards Grave Bridge, secured that nicely. Um, further to the north, uh, my, my, my sort of view here, was to set up a defensive perimeter around the landing zones um, and yeah secure that and then we can use a couple of units to move on to Arnhem um, unfortunately the German garrisons there were pretty tough so I wasn't able you can infiltrate through the city but I couldn't uh, the, the the unknown unit on the north side of that bridge was a German defender. You basically, it's a bit of a lucky dip here. All those question mark units, they can either be, um, they can be quite strong defenders, relatively speaking, or they can be just garrison units with zero defense and which are removed from play. Unfortunately, in that hex in Arnhem, there were some defenders which sort of held me up. Um, I did have the most luck down in Eindhoven, where I believe you start with three unknown markers here, and all three of those markers were these zero strength garrison units. Now, where are those mixed luck elsewhere with the, the bridges being blown and, and, and scattered results? We had great luck with 30 Core driving north along the road. They rolled really well in, in combat uh, and in exploitation. And as I mentioned, as they reached Einhoven, they, well, moved straight through the town without any opposition. Unfortunately, Further to the north, near Nijmegen, things just went from bad to worse, with more and more bridges blown across that uh, across that canal. So there's really a, sort of two different stories going on. Down the south with 30 Core advancing very quickly through Eindhoven, um, securing some bridges across. Um, it's, it's just a canal north of Eindhoven. Uh, Son Bridge. So Son Bridge, the Son... Son Bridge was blown, um, as it was historically, but we secured the rail bridge just to the, the west of that. Um, and we secured eventually another bridge way out in the east, 
um, which became important down the track. Um, so yeah, 30, th things are going well for 30 core, but further to the north around Nijmegen, um, a lot of blown bridges. Um, securing that graft bridge was important, and look, I'll, I'll point it out now, the situation around Arnhem was, was extremely quiet. Um, I was focused on securing that perimeter, I didn't push into Arnhem too hard. We did kind of get into the outskirts of the town and held that, and they're good for defence. But, I, well, you know, first time playing through this, I found it very hard to push into Arnhem. A small number of those decent German um, defenders uh, it really holds up the city um, quite powerfully. As we advanced through the turns, um, Vagal bridges were blown. Um, we did find some sort of alternative bridge crossings. As we tried to press even further around Nijmegen, we found more and more blown bridges to the point that um, the only way to, into Nijmegen without repairing these bridges was to move sort of to the south around, um, uh, what's it called, Quick and Mook on the the Mass River. You can see down in the south. Um, so yeah, we have here all five, um, all five bridges across that um, that canal were blown. This is um, again the uh, the known as the, the Mass Val Canal um, to the west of Nijmegen. and they were all blown. Um, and I managed to just managed to secure that rail bridge to the south, but this is really problematic because it slows down. 30 cores advance. Rather than going along the highway, if they want to cross that rail bridge, they have to detour along sort of these other roads, not the highway. Um, and yeah, speed is is of the essence. Um, yeah, so the other story here is that of um, Grusbeck Heights to the southeast. And again, I was focused with these airborne units on securing a perimeter and securing that drop zone. Um, you just don't know when the Germans are going to come onto the map from the east. As it turned out, the Germans rolled very poorly and very few units did come on. But um, if they come on early, you risk losing your drop zone. And um, you've got a decision here. Do you push on Nijmegen, risk losing your drop zone, um, or do you kind of defend your drop zone? Um, I you know, tried to secure some bridges across that canal, which all failed. And then I kind of pushed into Nijmegen, just kind of scouting out, found some pretty strong German garrisons under those sort of unknown question mark units and decided not to push any further until 30 Corps had arrived. This is a pretty critical decision here. This is one of the big decision points you make is what to do in Nijmegen. And in hindsight, that was probably a bad decision. Um, I probably needed to do more in Nijmegen early on to clear some of those town and city hexes. This is tough defensive terrain, particularly given the kind of the German defense that I encountered. Um, look, without spoiling anything, it didn't turn out too well. And uh, yeah, I attributed that to these poor decisions early on. Now, by the 19th of December, whilst all this fighting is happening, 30 Corps are really advancing quite quickly. They reach, uh, you know, they, they cross that, that best rail. It's a slight sort of diversion to the west. They cross the best uh, railway bridge. They um, drive through Vagel. There's a bit of opposition there along the highway to Uden. Um, the, the poles begin to drop, and there's a decent perimeter around this drop zone north, you know, in, in northwest of, of Arnhem. Um, still very little offensive sort of action taking place. Um, down in the south, though, sort of <laughs> Nijmegen again proves to be problematic because I, I make a big, just really clumsy error here in letting um, some, some German infantry uh, push towards that one. And this, this is the one rail bridge I have now across the Mars River, and it's super important. And I get a bit clumsy, and just some of these uh, airborne units just move a little bit too far and. Um, some German infantry capture Quick, quick um, that little town south of the river, and exert their zone of control into that hex, which is, again, you're just going to slow down 30 core as they advance. 
Um, yeah, it's it's a real pain. But this stage, though, again, some some advanced units of thirty core have crossed that railroad bridge, um, and they are on the outskirts of Newmarket. Have a, just keep this in mind. This is the I think the nineteenth of September, so they've made it up to Newmarket very quickly. Um, the the advanced elements have. I make another tactical error here uh, around Vagel, and I. I guess I don't really appreciate how rapidly these Germans can move along these roads as well. And from the east, we have some German armament units which which um, rapidly move along and place themselves adjacent to that that highway. That little kind of that, those those subtle moves, just a simple move of moving a German armament unit adjacent to a highway, which exerts a zone of control onto that highway, forces Thirty Corps to go around that that area. Um, they can't use the highway movement because they're entering then a German zone of control, which means they have to go off the highway, which costs them in effect um, three extra movement points, which converts to in effect nine extra hexes because of the rapid highway movement available, which really slows down their advance. Um, whilst all this is happening, we're pushing out the flanks quite nicely. There are occasional German threats on the left and the right, but um, the Germans never seriously threaten um, the Allied flanks. There was a brief moment where they threatened that um, that railway bridge at its best, but that was pretty quickly fought off by the um, by airborne units out in the west there. So by the 20th of September, um, there's a lot of fighting going on around Vagel as we try to push those Germans away. Little bits of elements of the of 30 Corps are managing to get past Vagel and advance towards Nijmegen where they're trying to get into the city trying to attack. To the north, um, I'm probably spending too much time here distracted out in the west, far west of, of Arnhem, um, trying to kind of secure the perimeter and look for alternative ways across the river. Not much fighting going on um, in or around Arnhem. Uh, some heavier German reinforcements uh, are arriving. By the 21st of September, um, certainly the left and right sort of flanks of the offensive are very secure. Um, Vagel is looking more and more secure. 30 Corps now really driving into Nijmegen. Those who know the campaign are probably thinking it's way too late for this, and I agree. Um, we're trying to move into Nijmegen, trying to secure those now city hexes. Engineers throughout this period have been repairing these bridges. They, they're rushing up as well on the highway. They're trying to repair those bridges across the canal and are doing so slowly. Um, I do lose control. So what we see here is um, a, a German offensive sort of on the southern flank of Grusbeck, which cuts off the northern side of that, that rail bridge. So we then have to rely on those newly repaired bridges along that, um, that canal. By this stage, this is the 22nd of September, um, the, the writing is pretty much on the wall for the, um, the Allies. Nijmegen still isn't clear. There is still tough German defence in this area, they begin to, the Allies begin to kind of um, move out to, uh, along the Vile River looking for alternative crossings. They do get a, an engineer who sets up a little ferry which lets them get some units across the river. Uh, my, my kind of view here is to try to move onto the northern end of that New Jamaican bridge and try and attack it from behind, but then we're met by some fast moving um, German defenders who, who move into the area. Um, there's another German counterattack in Vagel, uh, just north of Vagel actually, which again imposes a ZOC on the highway, um, which again slows down the, the, the this constant wave of 30 core um, reinforcement basically moving along this highway. By the end of the campaign, by the end of the uh, the, uh, yeah, the the game, um, I still haven't crossed. I still haven't secured New Nation Bridge. It is quite clearly a, a German victory. And yeah, I, I, I look back at those early decisions I made not to move into New Jamaican in strength. Um, I also look at the, the bridges being blown um, and how that kind of forced me to come to the south towards um, Mook and Quick and the, the rail bridge there. Um, and I balance this up with the, the great success of 30 Corps, how 30 Corps drove through Einhoven so quickly and how they secured that, that best rail bridge and, and drove through Vagel and we secured Graf Bridge. 
and the niche megan was just this massive massive roadblock it was the i guess the cornerstone of of german defensive success um this is where we drew a lot of those you know tough german defenders they had more in in um in arnhem arnhem was basically a no-show nothing there was no sort of i kind of floundered up in the north there um north of the Vaal and um the Niederrhein. um yeah not much happening up the north so yeah that was um that was my first playthrough of holland 44 i certainly learned a lot of mistakes um it's a, it's a great experience it really is a great game that really nicely um captures the feel of operation market garden if you're uh, if interested in operation market garden if you've played other operation market garden games um, this has a, a nice relatively small manageable footprint and it really feels it captures the feel of uh, operation market garden so that is holland 44 by gmt published by mark Simonich um, in 2017 um, very much recommended um, and uh, yeah i hope that's given you some idea of, of what the game is like and, and how it how it might play out if you're a, a relatively inexperienced player